stand together and we'll continue in worship. All I see is the battle. You see my victory. to fear now for I am safe for you sing this out church so when I fight I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high oh God the battle belongs to you every fear I lay at your feet I sing through the night oh There's nothing impossible for you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So glad uh, that you're here today. Uh, welcome to worship and uh, welcome to First Missionary. Cody, you glad to be here today? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. How are you doing? How am I doing? Truth be told. Yeah, let's just all say that together this morning. Truth be told. Uh, you know, our hearts, we, we strive for a more transparent congregation. We, we, we strive for a more transparent and authentic worship experience. And as we ended our service last week, we ended it on that song, Truth Be Told. And I actually talked with a couple after the first service, and, and I asked them how they were doing. And he told me, almost like in a confessional, after we talked, he said, 
in the back of my mind, I was hearing this song, Truth Be Told. And, and he didn't necessarily take time to share with me really what was going on in his life. But we played that song. And he said was, that song was on my heart the entire service. And then we played that song, and he said he cried like a baby all through the worship that day, or at, 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 on, the, on his way home, rather, at that point. And so I appreciate you asking me how I'm doing. I'm not great. I, I have had better weekends. Uh, there's some things I'm really excited about, and I've got great friends and people I love, and I'm really excited for them. So some good things happened to them this weekend, but I, I'm not great. Just truth be told, truth be told, I'm not great. But I'm going to tell you what's encouraging to me. When I come here, and I hope it's the same for all of you, things get smaller when I come here. Like my challenges and, and my struggles, my mistakes and, and things I deal with, when I come here and I'm with God's people and I'm with y'all, things get smaller. And, and I'm, just, I'm just like convicted that hopefully we are capturing the essence of the greatness of the glory of God. And so what happens is the things that we deal with, when we bring them here and then they're, in, they're compared to the greatness of Him, they're really, it's not fair to compare at all. That the sufferings of, of this life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. So I'm not great at all. And I don't want to be cliche-ish or like, like a pun or not even a pun, but just like cliche-ish. I'm not great, but he is. And so I will let him do what he does <laughs> in my life. And I'm, I'm so glad you're here. And if, if somebody came in this morning and asked you how you were doing, I know it's awkward. It's authenticity is, is not easy. And it's easy. What's easy is to say, oh, I'm great because you keep moving, right? It takes time to be authentic. It takes time to stop and to, to, to listen to somebody to really share about what's going on in their life. You have to be willing to hear them say, I'm not great. And you just don't walk on. You take some time. And it's not always easy. So our heart today is that as you come to this place, if you are like staying 15, 20 minutes later and you're in the gathering area or you're out in the parking lot or you're outside the bathroom in the hallway and you're staying longer because church is not something you go to. Church is something that you are and church is something that happens. And you're listening to somebody and you're taking time to hear them share and you're sharing back with them and you're being real with them and they're being real with you. I want you to know it's okay. You're free to do that in this place. You're free to do that. So as we turn our hearts to worship, and we just go into an avenue, I mean, a time of prayer. You know, I'm thinking about this week, and this week is, this week is Holy Week. Today's Palm Sunday. This is the day that Christ, we celebrate and remember the day that Christ came into Jerusalem. And, and this is Passion Week, His Passion. It'll come to Good Friday, and there'll be a darkness that comes over Good Friday. But then next Sunday... Man, he, he burst out of that tomb. And, and all my problems and all my challenges were left in that tomb. But the reality is that when he burst out of that tomb, so did love, so did grace, so did mercy. And I burst out of it with him. And we're going to celebrate that next Sunday with three services at 8, uh, 9.15, and 10.45. So this week, we want you to encourage, bring your family, your friends, and let's celebrate next Sunday. And today... We're going to have communion together. We're going to do that today. And uh, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are free to participate in that. If you are uncomfortable, you're free to observe. You do what is best for you. We've provided the elements. 
we even have for the kiddos, uh, we got the goldfish so that you can give your kiddos and then you can explain communion later, but we don't want you having to, to you know, struggle with them because they're like, I want something to eat, you know, and they don't understand. And so you're, you're trying to, you're trying to give them a theological, you know, uh, uh, take on communion and, and you don't have time to do that. So you just say, Hey, here's a, here's a, here's a goldfish. And you just eat it and be quiet, okay? And, and we're going to worship Jesus or, or something like that, right? Yeah, something like that, right? Or, whatever you got to do, right? You, you would, I, you, I know you do that as a dad. Yeah, just there you go. Uh, or at least your wife probably would. Yeah, she probably would. Yeah, so let's just go into a time of, of prayer right now and turn our hearts to worship. We got some uh, guys who are serving our body as deacons. And, and we are going to have a commissioning prayer and ordination prayer over those guys. And that's going to be really neat. So why don't you just pray for us and, and, and lead us right back into worship. Again, we're so glad you're here. If you're, on, if you're watching online today, you're streaming from your home, wherever you might be, we're so glad uh, you're a part of our worship gathering today. Father, we thank you that not only can we come and be real and authentic with one another in this place, but perhaps more importantly, we can come before your throne in confidence authenticity and worship the living God. Let us be mindful this morning, Father, of what is available to us in the person of Jesus. Rest in peace, hope, forgiveness of sin, resurrected life. And as we see a picture of the gospel in communion later, us be mindful of the shed blood on our behalf, the broken body that we deserve. And use those truths, Father, to stir us to worship in spirit and in truth this morning. Challenge us, Father, to worship freely. Express our love for you in this place. If that means singing, standing, sitting. Challenge us to pray. Even during worship, Father. And we'll trust you with the results. And we give you the honor and the glory that you deserve. We love you. Rock of ages, clear for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water in the blood from thy wounded side wish for be of sin. Double cure, save from wrath. If you made me pure, not the labors of my hands could fulfill. I lost demands. My but no my tears forever flow all for sin could not atone thou must say I bring simply to that cross I cling naked came to thee for dress helpless love to thee for grace foul I to love found it 
Wash me, Savior, out I die. While I draw this bleeding breath, and when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, Jesus paid it all. At this time, we just want to stop like right here in the middle of worship and just have communion together. So as you came in today, I believe you were able to find uh, the elements. These are, uh, it's like a, a two in one type thing that you have in your hand there. Again, if you are a follower and a believer in Jesus Christ and you've confessed him as Lord, and declare Him as Lord today of your life. You are more than free to share this with us. If you're uncomfortable, you're welcome to just to sit back and meditate and to pray and 
let the Lord just speak into your life. Um, you will have a top part that is like a cellophane, and it's a peel-back part. And so you're welcome to go ahead and kind of slightly pull that back and just ready yourself and get prepared to take communion with us today. And, and you know, there's, there's so much about this that is, is really special. Um, the symbolism of communion. Many of us grew up, we call it the Lord's Supper. It is one of the two ordinances of the church. And we believe that this is one of those things that really helps you to, to see what the church really is and the full functioning of the church and, and really what even defines or constitutes a church. It's the observance of, of the ordinances. You know, one being baptism and the other one communion. And it's so full of symbolism. Uh, even as you were tearing the, the, the cellophane back today, I was just reminded that we are, um, he was wounded for our transgressions. You know, by his stripes, we are healed. I, I was even in the, the tearing away of the cellophane, I, I was reminded of, you know, the, the, the tearing away of his, his body. Christ's sacrifice for us, you know, that we will remember this, this Friday. Typically, we will stop on Monday, Thursday, on Thursday evening and share this together. And, and last year, we did that as families in a, a, a live stream event. And we're not going to do that this Thursday. So we're going to do communion now to prepare ourselves for what's coming up this week. I know that sometimes people, even believers, when it comes to communion, they, they may sit there and in a moment of reverence, of remembering the, what Christ did and the, the holiness of, of, of Him. Sometimes people may feel very unworthy. And I, I know people who have refrained from communion because they did not feel worthy. And I want to remind you today that, that your worthiness is not a feeling one way or the other. But if you are in Christ, He has forgiven you completely. He has declared you holy and beloved. And you, by virtue of Christ, you are worthy. You're worthy in Him. You say, but Brother Allen, you don't know what I did this week. You don't know what I've, I've said or what I've thought or what I've done. And I just want to remind you that whatever challenges it, you're, you are dealing with today, Christ died for those. And in Christ, you are completely forgiven. So he's not going to crawl back on the cross to get you worthy to take communion. He's already done that. You honor Him and you celebrate Him even if you don't feel all that great. And we believe that there is healing and there is hope and there is encouragement that will come to you as you do this. And sometimes you just need to be reminded all that He did for you, and that your holiness and your worth is all wrapped up into Him. But it's true what He says about you. And you cannot deny that today. He loves you. You are holy and beloved in Christ today. So as you bow your heads, we'll pray, and then we'll take communion. Father, thank You for Christ and His sacrifice. And thank You, Lord, that even when we don't feel like it, how you see us and how you love us and how you have forgiven us, that remains unchanged. So Lord, even when we have to pull ourselves up, we trust your spirit to do that. 
and to whisper in our ear and to remind us all of who you are and what Christ has done for us. Today, we stand in grace and we will fall any other way. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Jesus said to the disciples when he gathered together with them on that, that Thursday evening when after he had washed their feet and they came together to observe Passover. The scripture says, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, when the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And Jesus took bread. He broke the bread. And he gave thanks. And Father, we are thankful for this, this element, this bread, this, this tiny thing in our hand. God, thank you that it represents something so, so big and so great. The sacrifice and the broken body of Christ. Jesus gave the bread to the disciples and he said, take eat, take eat, take eat, take eat. Now, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat, even now. And in the same manner, Jesus took the cup. And gave thanks. Father, we thank you for what's represented in this vial today. A remembrance of the cup of Christ. Father, we know that the cup that he drank was taking on our sin. We know, Father, that in that cup, we are reminded of his blood that has not only covered, but has removed our sin. And Father, this is a, a tiny, a tiny thing that we hold. But it is so great in what it represents. And what it represents was great in the accomplishment of our forgiveness and our justification. We thank you, Father, that even as we take this cup, we are reminded that Jesus didn't just die. But three days later, he was raised to walk in newness of life. And that when he came out of that grave, I came out with him. Also to have newness of life and to walk in the freedom and in the grace of Christ. Thank you for all this cup and what it represents. Be honored and glorified. As we take it even now. Jesus gave the cup to the disciples and said. Drink from it all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you. I will not drink of the fruit of this vine from now on. Until that day when I drink it new with you. In my father's kingdom. Drink that cup. Even now. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now, do this for us if you don't mind. Take that and put it in a, a safe place. Continue to share the goldfish with your kiddos. And, and you can explain as a family what just happened today. And you can do that later. As you leave today. We invite you to take that empty container. And as you leave, you'll place it in one of the trash receptacles, either at, inside or outside the doors. But do this when you leave, okay? As you carry that empty receptacle that's in your hand or you just set aside, as you carry that today, be reminded in the emptiness of, of that, that thing that you hold, 
that container, be reminded that Jesus Christ emptied himself. He gave his all and held nothing back in regards to your salvation. And as you go out of this building with that in your hand, remember that when he paid it all, and he said, it is finished. He meant it. He meant it. And there is nothing you can add to that. And there is nothing you can do to take away from it. All you hold is an empty container that reminds you of the sufficiency of Jesus Christ and what he did for you. And you walk on in that today. You walk on knowing the sufficiency of the grace, the love, and the mercy of Christ. To the praise and glory of God the Father. And God's people said, in Jesus' name, amen. As we continue in worship together here in this next song, let's uh, actually let's remain seated. And um, I challenge you to, I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> let's all, uh, let's take this time just to be reverent pray to yourselves and reflect on the love that was displayed and poured out in the person of Jesus. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all men that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away. His wounds which mar the chosen one bring men sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders the shame I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers, it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is that you paid that we might have eternal life may we never ever ever take it for granted 
and may it forever fuel our worship. Let's all stand together and sing this last one. sing this morning, Father, thank you that despite our sin, despite our uncleanliness, you made a way through Jesus. Would you challenge us this morning to live in a manner worthy of the gospel, to exude joy, to allow you to shine light through us in a twisted and perverse generation. Would you be honored and glorified even now, Father? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. 
it's your work never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you work even when i don't feel it you work you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working away make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are that is who you are Father, this morning as we dig into Scripture together, we pray that your truth would wash over us, challenge us, teach us, encourage us, and that we would not be hearers only of the Word this morning, but we would be doers. That we would hear your commands, your encouragements, and we would obey. That we would walk according to your spirit, live a life, again, worthy of the gospel, all the while resting in Jesus, knowing that our salvation, our place in him is secure, that no one can snatch us from his hand. We praise you for that truth this morning, Father, and we continue to worship you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we are going to prepare to dive into Philippians chapter 3 today. Uh, this is going to, I think, work out uh, really, really great as we uh, observe uh, Passion Week this week and, and then next Sunday, uh, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 is a section of scripture that is extremely extremely powerful and i would encourage you this week to in your quiet time in your reading time uh, to get along with the lord and and to dive into philippians chapter three and i cannot stand here another second without recognizing the fact that we have a very very special guest in our service today uh, the first time ever attending worship with us miss scarlett is here today, uh, Miss Scarlett Edwards. So, 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 Josh. I mean, Mom gets all the glory, but we at least have the uh, a moment here in the service where the dad gets a little bit of the glory. So, you stand up with Miss Scarlett if you don't care, and everybody just give the Lord a hand clap of praise that Miss Scarlett is here with us today, and she is worshiping at First Missionary this morning with her family. So great to have you guys back in worship with us. So as we turn to uh, get ready to turn to Philippians chapter three, it would be real easy today just to dive into the first part of Philippians three and and, and go right to uh, where we feel like God's leading us um, uh, next week. But there's the this ending to to chapter two and, and this message series we've entitled my joy, a walk through Philippians and and, and this is one of those sections of, of the letter that reminds us that this is actually a letter. This, this is really a letter written by a real person to real people about real things and about real people and about real needs. And it's not just theological and uh, didactic and teaching, but it is extremely real. It is extremely practical. And the last part of chapter 2 actually reminds us of, of that truth. And it's a perfect, perfect, perfect section of Scripture for what we're going to do this morning in our service. Um, 
as we come to the end of chapter 2, we see a very simple message. A very simple message. And here's the message. We can't, and you can say this with me, okay? We can't. Come on. We can't. One more time. We can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. In a New Testament church, not only does the church observe the ordinances, but there's a pattern in the New Testament that we believe defines a church. And also, when, when these things are observed and done in a healthy way, it helps to make a church healthy. And that is the recognition, not just of all spiritual gifts, that every believer has a gift, but there's a recognition that God will allow certain gifts as they all serve the body, as they all encourage the body, He does allow certain gifts to be put into what we would historically call the offices. The defined pattern, the defined offices of the church. That being the office of elder, pastor, which is one and the same, and also that of deacons, or what is really better referred to as church servants. Individuals set aside for the specific function of undergirding and serving the church in specific ways. Elder pastor, what we could even call lead pastor or pastors or elders in the plural, but also that of deacons. Our, our body has been in a process the last several months of identifying individuals who have the gift of service and they've already been serving in the church and there is, there is a need and there has been a need to call into our, our church more individuals who would serve in the office of deacon. So today, we are going to recognize those six individuals and their families. We will have a commissioning and ordination prayer over them. And then we'll just thank God that they are individuals who are willing to serve in this body at this place at this time. Those individuals are not in the service today. This service, but we have their family picture and we will call them and mention them by name. And then we'll have a prayer even in this service for them. But I want you to look with me in Philippians chapter 2 verses 19 through 30. And be reminded of this very simple message. You can't. We can't. Do it. Alone. Paul says. But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy. To send Timothy to you shortly. So that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. And listen to some of the characteristics of, of Timothy. This, this man who Paul was so influential in his life. In his discipleship. He says. For I have no one else of kindred spirit. No one else of kindred spirit. Who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. For they all seek after their own interests. Not those of Christ Jesus. So when Paul surveys the landscape of individuals who could actually leave where he is. Or be dispatched from another location to go to these Philippian believers. He's kind of hard pressed. He's hard pressed to find some faithful people who are doing what they do for the glory of Christ, for the gospel, who are not seeking their own interests, but are purely invested in the interests 
of Christ Jesus. And he finds and he sees Timothy. He says, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately as soon as I see how things go with me. And I trust in the Lord that I myself also will be coming shortly. Again, he doesn't know if he's going to be exonerated or if he's going to be executed. Uh, he's in prison. He's in jail. But don't forget, there was joy in that jail. There was joy in that jail. And that theme continues to come up. It'll come up even again in this section of Scripture. But, he says, I thought it was necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. Now, if you ever are struggled with your name and you don't like your name, just remember this guy right here, okay? And I always remember, uh, my parents might have named me this, but they, they didn't name me Epaphroditus, okay? So, uh, his name's Epaphroditus, and, but he had a very significant role in ministry. He says, I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. Now, listen to some of the characteristics about him. He calls him my brother, my fellow worker, and fellow soldier. Everyone needs that. A fellow brother, a fellow sister, someone who is as passionate as they are about their ministry and their life and the gospel. They also need someone who is a fellow soldier. Neat word here because it's the picture of someone who, who goes into battle with someone else. A fellow soldier. Somebody who will get in the foxhole with you. I was reminded this weekend. And it's a crazy story how this thing happened. And I don't have time to share it with you. But it had to do with uh, some people who are very near and dear to me. My grandparents. And as I was praying about some things yesterday, I could hear, I could hear, like my grandfather say to me, Son, I'm with you in the good times, and I'm with you in the bad times. And it dawned on me, that's how you know who are your fellow soldiers, and that's how you know who really loves you? The people who are with you in the good times and they stick with you in the bad times. Epaphroditus, fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need because he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick and, and he, he got very ill. And he was the guy that would deliver the letter back to the Philippians and, and go back between Paul and them. He was that messenger and he had become ill. In verse 27, for indeed he was sick to the point of death, but God had mercy on him. And not only on him or not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Paul's way of saying, if my fellow soldier had, had died, not only do I have sorrow in, in this challenging time that I am, and there, yeah, there's joy in that, but there's still sorrow. If he had died, then there would have been sorrow upon sorrow. So God spared his life, and in sparing his life, he also spared me, and he showed mercy to me also. Therefore, I have sent him all the more eagerly in order that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be blessed, concerned about you. Therefore, receive him in the Lord with all what? Receive him in the Lord with all joy. And hold men like him. Men who had given their lives. Had even come close to death. For the sake of the gospel. Hold men like him in high regard. Because he came close to death for the work of Christ. Risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. In other words, 
where you could not come to me and you could not be there for me, Epaphroditus, he filled the gap and met the need. Today, we are going to recognize six individuals and their families, six guys who have been serving our body for a while, uh, six families that we have come to love and to appreciate, and I know that you have too. And I'm going to read their names. Their pictures will come up on the screen. And then in this service, we are going to pray for them. And in the second service, we will pray over them. You are more than welcome to stick around for the second service. In fact, sometimes uh, I would even uh, love to see some of you come back and just worship in the second service. And then you say, I don't want to hear that sermon again, so I'm going to go home. That's fine. Just come back and worship in the second service if you would want to do that. So today, six individuals and their families, and I didn't write all the families' names down, and I, I might be, I might forget as I just look at them and try to recall them by memory. So many of you know their families, so I will just mention the individuals. Today in our body, we are setting aside and calling into the deacon ministry. Uh, Lee Cope. Lee Cope, his wife, is Kathy. They have two boys. You know them. Precious family to us. Lee, longtime member of First Missionary. I, I think this is the only church he's ever attended. Often behind the scenes, serving. I, I, I will tell you, uh, and I don't mind saying this. One of the most giving people I've ever met. And does it in a way that no one would ever know. But I know because I'm his pastor. Andrew Long. Andrew Long has uh, not originally from our area. Uh, but Andrew uh, came to us from the Nashville area. From day one, Andrew Long has been serving this body. Uh, you see Andrew and his family on the picture. And by the way, listen to this. Yesterday, uh, this past weekend, they had to rush Ariana. Uh, to Vanderbilt, she had a, a bad seizure, and it didn't look good at all. And he and I talked on uh, Thursday and Friday of this week, I believe it's Friday, and Ariana is home now and is doing better. Uh, Andrew's here with us this morning. He serves in the safety and security ministry of our church. And so you're safe and secure because he's got a team of guys who work behind the scenes to take care of things. Mike White, uh, his wife is Pat. Mike uh, has been a part of our church. I, I don't have the years in front of me, but in the years that Mike has been here and Pat's been here, uh, Pat serves as our church clerk. Mike is one of those guys who's behind the scenes. He actually served on the team that uh, helped us to um, uh, have the building that we're in today. He was a part of that building and re relocation team. Another guy, he's taught Sunday school. Another guy who's behind the scenes, loves Jesus, um, is there to help do anything that he can for you, Mike White. There's Miss Pat. Bobby Green, what a tremendous testimony in life. Uh, there's Bobby and his old gaggle of kiddos and some grandkids there. Bobby Green, what a tremendous testimony. Uh, I hope that one day, if you haven't heard Bobby share his testimony, uh, I hope you get to hear it. In fact, I've already told him, any Sunday that I'm not able to preach, I said, Bobby, you be ready to go. You may get a call at 6 in the morning, and you're going to share your testimony with folks again at First Missionary. I may just even feign sickness one morning and, and uh, uh, just to get him to come, okay? I, I don't miss often, but that would be worth it. Uh, Bobby and his wife, Misty, she serves in our Kids Sprout ministry. Uh, what a precious couple. That they are. Bobby has served in our student ministry behind the scenes, serving, working. We'll do anything for you. Uh, our deacon body, when they were looking at individuals, and, 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 and listen, there's about 20 names, 20 names that had been given by nomination and also that they had come up with. And one of the things that they said was, you know, at this time we just feel we'll call six and maybe more later. But someone who's kind of newer to our body, but yet another person who's had a heart for discipleship, a heart for service, 
serving behind the scenes. Another guy that if I called today, if I called him today, he would say, whatever it takes, whatever you need, uh, Jason Teague, Jason Teague and his wife, Julie, two girls, um, kind of newer to our church family the last few years, but one of those guys that just committed to the body and, and serves, and, and so does his wife. She serves in the children's ministry, and just so happy that they're coming to serve, um, and Jason will be recognized as a deacon. And then, and then certainly last but not least by any means is Mr. Dan Hicks. Dan and his wife, Jody. Uh, came here years ago because they were looking for a ministry for their children. They were looking to uh, find a place where their children could grow and their children could learn and be involved. And, and, and I don't remember the exact story how they came to First Missionary. Dan uh, is a Marshall County boy down South Marshall area. Boy, he can tell you all kinds of stories. But he and his family came and, and they, they've stuck and and Dan is another one of those guys. He serves on the safety security team. He helps lead our mowing team. He does a lot of maintenance. He helps Benny on stuff, on maintenance stuff out back uh, with the mowing equipment. And by the way, by the way, by the way, mowing season's coming up. We want this place mowed for Easter, okay? We really do. So jump on a mowing team, serve on a mowing team. Dan Hicks is one of those guys you can see about that. Again, serves on safety security behind the scenes. Uh, he's grown in his discipleship. It's one of those stories where the family comes because they're, they're looking for a place for their children, but then they find their place, and they start growing and learning, and their discipleship flourishes, and, and Dan certainly fits, fits that. So we're proud to be able to recognize Dan Hicks as a deacon in our ministry. So we're going to pray over these guys. And I'm going to invite you to reverently to stand with us this morning. And we're just going to go into a time of response while we recognize these guys and pray over them and ordain and commission them uh, for this ministry in our body. And I'm going to pray. And Cody, I'm just going to turn the last few minutes over to you. Okay? Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace to us. And Father, I thank you for these specific individuals and their families who serve the body. Lord, I know they don't even like recognition. They don't want to be in front of people. They don't want their names called. I know it, Lord. And that's one of the reasons why they are such faithful servants. So Father, today we put our hands upon, and we pray for, and we lift up to you, these individuals and their families. And Father, we as a body need to be thankful for the Timothys, the Epaphroditus, for all those who use their gifts to serve the body well. So we give them to you, we commission, ordain them, set them apart, recognize what you've already done in their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. This morning we've seen a wonderful picture of the shed blood and broken body of Jesus and what he makes available to all of us through the cross and his resurrection. If this morning you have not accepted that free gift that's offered by Jesus, if you haven't repented of your sin, placed your faith in Christ, why not today? And if you are in Christ this morning, may we continue to worship freely and respond in gratitude for what he has accomplished on our behalf. 
Let's sing this again together. Praise the one paid my debt, raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one paid my debt, raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one paid my debt, raised this life up from the dead. Praise the one, pay my debt, raise this life up from the dead, Jesus. We'll go ahead and have our prayer counselors come forward. And if you are in need this morning of prayer over any situation, any circumstance in your life, or if you feel called to make a decision this morning, whether it's meeting Jesus for the very first time, being changed, made into a new creature in Christ, or if it's some great change he's making in your life, a calling you feel that you need prayer over, or a decision you need to make in your family. Would you come forward? Let's continue to sing, church. Does Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. Praise the one who paid my debt. Raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one pay my debt. Raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who pay my debt. Raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who pay my debt. Raise this life up. The dead Jesus and Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white in the snow Father, you're so good, and you're so worthy of all praise under heaven and earth. As we go together, would you continue to make us one? Would you make us mindful today, every day, and especially this week, of what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross, what he offers, and the security, and the forgiveness, and the unity that we have in him together. Thank you, Father. We praise you even now. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you back Easter morning.